and gentlemen. Fun. Thank you very much for coming along to uh, a pretty amazing facility, isn't it? All I can say turning up here is that it's a hell of a lot different to Main Road. It certainly has changed a bit from, uh, from back in the day. Amazing place and uh, Terry alongside me, Manchester City season ticket holder, proudly with the Manchester City shirt and uh, very much a Manchester lad. This is all talking about Frank Warren's next big promotion which is on Saturday the 8th of April at the Manchester Arena. Some terrific fights on the card. Liam Smith against Liam Williams we know about. Super welterweight contests which well I don't know what's going to happen in that one. It's got all the makings of something very special. Professional debut for Nicola Adams, our double Olympic champion. Zolani Tete who beat uh, Paul Butler not so long back, he's on the bill as well. But the main factor today, as well as introducing you to some of the undercard fighters a little bit later on, which we'll concentrate on when we finish speaking to the two guys, the main focus today is the headline act, the main event, which is the WBO World Lightweight Champion. Between the champion, now undefeated in 32 professional fights, Terry Flanagan, and a very good fighter based in Spain, Russian born, lived there till he was 16 years old. Peter Petrov lives in uh, Madrid, trains there, also trains in Santa Fe over in the United States. He's got four defeats on his record, but he comes into this having won his last six. And he came up short against a very good fighter who went on to win the world title, Dejan Zlak. Zlati Kanin, I better get the pronunciation right, and Marcus Maidana, he fought against him as well a few years back, took that at very short notice and uh, wound up being beaten in Argentina by a very heavy-handed hand, heavy fighter and that one was at a higher weight as well. So this, I think in anybody's view, is very much a genuine world title fight. Peter, Peter is not just, uh, he's not just making up the numbers, He's coming here very much looking as this as a fight he is capable of winning. And Terry in, his, in the past has said he finds it difficult to motivate himself against guys with whom he doesn't have the fear factor. And I think Terry had recognised, and Steve, his trainer, who's sitting at the other end of the bench here, that uh, this fella is a very live and very genuine threat to his status as WBO World Lightweight Champion. Well, first of all, it's... Uh, Coming up, uh, coming up not too far away now, Steve, uh, Terry. You eighth of eighth uh, of April. What sort of nick are you in as you as you approach it from this stage? How are you feeling? Yeah, I'm where I need to be right about now in camp. I mean, we've got seven week. Uh, just started sparring, running hard, and yeah, things going well. I said that uh, you know you need uh, maybe the fear factor. Is is that is that a fair observation? Yeah, well, I know. If I'm not 100% against Petrov, I could, I could slip up, so I know if I'm not on my game 100%, then there's a, there's a potential banana skin and I won't get them big unification fights later on in the year. So first and foremost, get in the, get in the gym, do the hard work and me at my best beat Petrov at his best in my eyes. Steve uh, has said that outside the current world champions, in his opinion, that Peter's the best guy out there. Do you uh, do you think that as well? You think you're looking at him as somebody who's very tough? Yeah, of course. I mean, he's been at world level for years now, and he's uh, up up there. He's uh, you know he's got four losses on his record with the good fighters, and yeah, he's seasoned pro. It's good. How about fighting here in Manchester and and being here at Manchester City, your beloved football club? Talking about it. Yeah, it's a dream come true to be here. I mean possibly fight in the stadium one day, but yeah, to get in the MEN where I watch Ricky out and fight back in the day and stuff, it's a dream come true, yeah. And uh, I, I gather there are going to be plans to introduce you to the Manchester public and bring you out here at the uh, Manchester City football ground, aren't they? Yeah, most definitely. I mean, I've been out a few times on the pitch at half time, so surely be doing that again this time to build the fight. Do you, do you know any of the players? Do they? No, no, not firstly. I mean, it, it's a bit strict. Uh, I think Pet likes to keep them back away from the public really and let them concentrate on their own game and I'll concentrate on mine. 
Okay, well, we'll talk more about the fight in detail in a little while. Um, Pedro doesn't speak, uh, doesn't speak great English, but he does speak fluent Spanish. As I said, he lived there since the age of 16. And I suppose we ought to say, first of all, tell us a little bit about yourself. You know, how, how does it feel as a fighter at the age of 33, coming into this, coming into it with a chance of winning the world title? What are your thoughts on the fight? Me siento muy contento porque llevo esperando mucho tiempo esta oportunidad y por fin llega ahora, ahora tengo la oportunidad de pelear por el título mundial y creo que me llega en mi mejor momento, yo creo que nunca he estado ni, eh, tan bien como ahora con la experiencia que tengo, con la fuerza, la velocidad que tengo yo creo que ahora es el mejor momento para mí Tengo 33 años, pero es, es una edad perfecta para mí. Sure. Yeah, I'm very happy. I've been waiting a very long time for this uh, fight, and, and finally it's come around, and I'm able to um, fight for a world, world title. Um, and I think I'm in my best moment at the moment. I'm in, I'm in top form, and I'm, I'm quicker and I'm faster than ever. And I think at 33, this, is, this comes at the perfect time for me. Do you feel at this stage of your career that you're talking about quicker and better? Do you feel that you're stronger? Because, I mean, physically, looking at you, you look physically stronger, more ripped, more cut than you were four or five years ago. Is that is that the benefit of training in the United States? Yes, that I think it's a bit of a but I think it's more fuerte, 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 Y ahora soy mucho más fuerte, mucho más rápido y mucho más listo boxeando que hace cuatro años, antes de que de empezar a trabajar con mi entrenador. Yeah, I think it's definitely a case of me being stronger. Um, I'm also um, a bit smarter as well, and that comes from training over in America. Um, four years ago, I've been training with Danny Zamora, and that's and that's improved me and made me a, a more intelligent fighter as well. Can you give us an idea of the people who you who you have been sparring with and who you're likely to be sparring with in the run up to this? Puede decir la gente con quien has estado haciendo sparring y los que mejor van a ser entrenando. Bueno, Los Ángeles es el mejor sitio para conseguir sparring porque yo tengo sparring de todo el mundo, de Rusia, Japón, México, Estados Unidos, y entonces eh, nunca tenemos un solo sparring, tenemos cuatro o cinco y para esta ocasión va a ser lo mismo. Tenemos cuatro o cinco zurdos que me van a ayudar. Yo sé que son muy importantes los sparring para preparar una pelea. Um, it's not a case of individuals really, but I, I would say LA is a great place for sparring. I've been sparring with um, fighters from Japan, from the USA, from Russia as well. Also a number of those that are southpaw, so I've been preparing really well for that fight. I understand how important sparring is, and that's what I'll be paying attention to in the run to the fight. Terry's obviously got plenty of respect for you. Tell us your thoughts about fighting Terry Flanagan, how good and how tough how much respect do you have for him as a champion? Obviously, Terry has a lot of respect, and as you know, what do you think of him? Well, I respect a Terry because he's the champion, he's invicto, he's never lost. And I think he's a good boxer, but I haven't seen many of his fights, I've seen one or two of his fights. And I think he's a good champion, but he's still still por demostrar eh, de lo que es capaz. Y ella lo ha he hecho en mi tiempo, yo he peleado por todo el mundo con gente muy dura. Y bueno, él es buen boxeador, pero todavía no se sabe lo que puede llegar a ser porque todavía no ha peleado con gente de mucho nivel. Obviamente, respeto a él como campeón. Tienes que ser, es un defeated. Es un muy buen boxeador. Pero tal vez no he visto mucho de sus peleas. He visto quizás un par. Creo que todavía tiene mucho que mostrar. Creo que todavía tiene mucho que mostrar en boxeo. Creo que todavía tiene mucho que mostrar en boxeo. Creo que todavía tiene mucho que mostrar en boxeo. Creo que todavía tiene mucho que mostrar en boxeo. Creo que todavía tiene mucho que mostrar en boxeo. Creo que todavía tiene mucho que mostrar en boxeo. Creo que todavía tiene mucho que mostrar en boxeo. Creo que todavía tiene mucho que mostrar en boxeo. Creo que todavía tiene mucho que mostrar en boxeo. Creo que todavía tiene mucho que mostrar en boxeo. Creo que todavía tiene mucho que mostrar en boxeo. Creo que todavía tiene mucho que mostrar en boxeo. Creo que todavía tiene mucho que mostrar en boxeo. Creo que todavía tiene mucho que mostrar en boxeo. Creo que todavía tiene mucho que mostrar en boxeo. Creo que todavía tiene mucho que mostrar ¿Cómo llegué ahí? Sí, ¿cómo llegaste? ¿Cómo, cómo, 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 cómo
Bueno, yo llegué porque mi madre encontró trabajo ahí, en, en España, y pues nos mudamos toda la familia, y por eso también yo estoy viviendo ahí en España. Yeah, it was a case of my mother. She found a job in in Spain, and then the whole family moved over there, and that's and that's why I reside there at the moment. Um, from from sixteen, and where whereabouts were you in uh, in in Russia before that? Pues este, pasé toda mi infancia y viví en Stavropol, que es mi ciudad, que está al sur este del del país. So I'm from Stavropol, which is in in the southeast of of Russia. Okay, well thank you very much and we'll, uh, I'll ask you a bit more about the, the actual fight itself in a moment. Now, let's bring, uh, bring Steve in because you've, uh, you know, you've uh, got one of the strongest trainer-fighter partnerships in the country. You clearly work well together. Just tell us in your own words, Steve, what makes, in your opinion, this fella special? Um, I think from when I first got him, he didn't have the winning mentality, but that's one of his biggest things now. He don't like getting beat up, nothing. He wants to be the best at everything in the gym. You say you didn't have the uh, winning mentality. In what, uh, in what sense? Well, Playing at it? Or, or? Yeah, as an amateur, I don't think he took it seriously enough. Um, he was good, he had the skills, but when he turned pro, he knew what he wanted then. And that's one of the main things. He, he dedicates his life to boxing. It, it was... It was that moment was it when he decided he's going to fight for money you know i think he's seen it as his career starting again you go from your amateur record which want the best and you get a clean slate to go again and he didn't want a loss on it so it's worked hard what's his uh, biggest attributes in in your opinion T toughness speed um, he's <coughs> adaptable in fights he can box forwards backwards can mix it up, he's got a good chin, um, he's energy, everything. And what about this particular fight? He said that he respects this fella as, as being tough. I mean, I've, all I've been able to do is just watch his, watch his fights on, on YouTube and he's clearly always in, in great shape and he does look, he looks very solid. Yeah, it'll be a tough fight, I think, of watching him. I think his coaches want him to box a bit more than what he actually wants to. I think at heart Petrov's a fighter and after two or three rounds that's what comes out so if he listens to his coaches and boxes he'll get beat on points and if it goes for the fight he'll get stopped. And you presumably Terry have to be ready for both eventualities whether he comes and boxes you or whether he comes and tries to have a tear up with you. I just know that on the night um, like he says I can adapt to whatever, whatever Petrov comes out and do I do the opposite and I'll come forward, go backwards, box, be the aggressor, be the counter puncher, or whatever Steve tells me to do, that's what I do, and I've got every confidence in me, and he'll get the right game plan. When you look at your record and where you've been now in those 32 wins, undefeated record, what do you regard as your best night? When, when, when was that the moment when, we, when you'd like us to sort of say, yeah, that's what I can do? I don't think you've seen it yet. Personally, I don't think I've boxed in my best. Uh, like I say, there's still a lot more to come from me. And, uh, the Magdaleno night, that was a, a big night. I was up for that. There was no way I was getting beat. I won, I won the belt on like a technicality and I didn't want to be known as a world champion. I won a belt on a technicality. So I got myself up for it and I took, I took him out. And uh, I'm looking forward to showing people what I can do again. What, what, do, what do you think we've actually not seen yet? You know, you, you, know, you know in your heart what you can do as a fighter. What, what has, as me as a commentator and these guys as, as uh, writers, reporters and, and boxing fans as well, what are we still going to see? I still think I'm, I'm boxing within myself. I mean, I'm com comfortable in fights. I've never been behind in a fight, so I've never had to show what, what I'm actually made of. You, you'll see the best thing when I do actually go behind in a fight and uh, I know I'm in a fight and it's 50-50 and it's me against him. Every round, take, don't take it round by round, see the fight as a whole, full fight, what, what I put into each round. It's also taken away from him. So, yeah, I think it's still, my better nights are still to come, which says a lot, 32 and all, world champion having my fifth defence. And you think this fella might be the tough enough 
good enough to drag that out of it? Yeah, of course. I mean, he's a great fighter. He's a com comfortable fight. He can also box a bit himself. He also packs a punch. And I know if I'm not 100%, it, I might not. I might slip up. So I know I need to be 100%. So I'll get that mindset, work hard in the gym, and like I say, I think me at my best. He's at his best. Tell us about fighting here in Manchester, because you're kind of uh, the the king of Ancoats, aren't you? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's great to, to box here again in Manchester. I mean, every time I've boxed in Manchester, I've come away with stoppage victory, so hopefully we can keep that one going. But, yeah, I know it's not going to be an easy night. It's going to be a tough fight, and that's why I'm unbeaten, because I take every fight as my hardest fight. Each fight, your next fight, is always your hardest fight. So, yeah, I know uh, April 8th, I'm going to going to be on it and put on a show for the fans. Do the uh, do the fans do the fans help you? Does it does it help you raise your game knowing them and hearing them? Are you aware of it? Yeah, of course. I mean, it spurs you on. I mean, uh, in previous fights here, uh, when you come out, everyone's chanting your name. It makes your hair stand up on your neck. It gives you goosebumps. You think this is for me. Everyone's here to support me, so it drives you on that a bit more. You must have uh, you must have grown up as a lad who was a, a huge Ricky Ricky Hatton fan. I mean, I commentated on any number of those fights, and there was a there was a special atmosphere. And and uh, the the Manchester public bring that, don't they? You know, must must be you know sort of a, at times a sort of a pinch yourself. I'm actually doing it. I'm doing what my hero used to do when I was a kid. Yeah, of course. With, with Ricky being a big boy as well, it was always uh, a dream to. Boxing the MM because we well, also watched him fight across the zoo and it was his career best performance. And you were there then, weren't yeah, you? Yeah, that night was electric because only a young boy then. And uh, yeah, looking at them nights, they what I want. Good nights like that, and all for it. With BT on board and stuff now, uh, you can take that next step. Well, hopefully so. Of course, this is the first, uh, first time that there's uh, going to have been the big alliance, the first time that it's going to be shown both on. Box Nation and on BT, and it is uh, a, a, an alliance and uh, and uh, something which I believe is incredibly important for boxing in this country. The fact that it's not just not just uh, one one show now, if you like, that it's getting two big broadcasters who are going to be going head to head, and it's got to be better for sport. I think it's going to be for the sport. It's going to be bringing more big boxing nights and providing, hopefully. <coughs> Big events such as this, which uh, which is has got to be good for sport and got to be good for all boxing lovers. Let's uh, go back to Peter. Uh, you've studied him. You know how he fights, southpaw, and you know how tough he is. How do you beat him? How do you beat him? Trabajando en el gimnasio, preparándome duro para este combate y haciendo el plan de trabajo que va a hacer mi entrenador. Yeah, just working on my own, my own game, boxing the way I know, and, and preparing well and trying to execute that game plan. Are you physically big enough to beat him? Because he is very big for a lightweight. Yo no creo que él sea grande. Yo peleé con gente mucho más grande que él. Peleé con Maidana cuando yo tenía. Six años menos que ahora. Yo no le veo grande. Um, I'm not worried about his size. I, I don't really see that he's, he's that big. I fought against opponents that have been a lot bigger, particularly Maidana, who I fought six years ago, and he was particularly big. So I'm not not worried about that. And what would it mean to you? How would it change your life if you were to become a world champion? Pues mi vida sería igual que hasta ahora, pero sería cambiando el mundo. It would be the same as now, but I'd be world champion, obviously. No, <laughs> Dream come true? Por supuesto. Es el sueño de mi vida y mi meta para lo que estoy trabajando más de 20 años y esa es una meta que voy a llegar. Of course it would be. I mean, it's, it's, it's my dream and it has been for 20 years and if I was able to achieve that, then it'd be wonderful. Okay, well, they will be doing their head-to-heads for you at some stage. I think we're going to do the head-to-heads after we've talked to all the undercard fighters. But uh, probably a good time to invite a few questions for Terry, Steve, Peter as well. Uh, I'll throw it open to, to you guys. Terry, 
Are you up to this fight a lot more than the fan of fight and possibly cruise? Yeah. Like, like I was saying before, I know I've got to be 100% in this fight because Petra's a very good fight. I knew me at 60-70% would have won them fights. So, yeah, no disrespect to them fighters. I mean, I was that much better than them. I know Petra's been about a world level, so it's a world level fighter. I need to be at my best to beat him, yeah. So I know I have to get myself up for it. John there was mentioning your size. How much longer can you continue at lightweight for? As long as I need to, really, to get these big fights and unification fights. But uh, yeah, hopefully by the end of this year, I'll be at 140 or even 147. Which unification fight would uh, would you like in an ideal world? If uh, if if you get through this as you hope you do. What are the fights that you would like to look at in the future? Well, a promotional dream would be if Pro was to come through the Linares fight and we could make that, but like I say, first and foremost, I've got Peter to deal with and then we can <coughs> look at them afterwards. But yeah, any one of them, Robert Easter, Garcia, I'd fight any of them. We seem to have been talking about you against Anthony Crawler forever. Does that? Do you get fed up of talking about it? Fed up of thinking about it? Because you must have people out in the street saying, you know, can you beat Crawler? Are you the best? I don't really think about it. To be fair, I mean, people mention it and just say, yeah, yeah, I want to fight. Hopefully, it can happen and it's done. But uh, I don't see the fight happening anytime soon. I mean, if it don't happen this year, probably will never happen because I'm going to move up eventually. Which would be a bit, it'd be a big shame, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, because I've been calling for the fight for well, over a year now, and even even more longer. So, yeah, hopefully it can happen, but I can't see it happening. Do you think Anthony would like it, or do you think it's his promoters who don't want it? I don't think it's Anthony personally. I think Anthony would have the fight. I mean, if the money's right, it's good for both of us. And yeah, yeah, I think he'd jump at the chance. I think it's his team that don't want the fight. I don't think they believe that he can win the fight. So. Yeah, don't think they want it. Anybody else? Any more? <coughs> no? Okay. Well, these are the, the main guys. WBO World Lightweight title. Terry Flanagan against Peter Petrov. Terry, of course, is the... He is the favourite to win it. But this guy is a tough man. Big bill coming up. And uh, they'll be available to do all your one-on-one -on -one interviews in, uh, in just uh, a few minutes. I think we're going to introduce you before then, though, to some of the undercard guys who are here, who are taking, taking part and helping to this, this to be very much a new era for BT and for Box Nation and a brilliant bill for Manchester on April the 8th. So thanks a lot, guys. Thank you.